Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, today I'm finally going to get around to a topic that I've wanted to cover for several years now, but because of delays in production and other things, I've had to put it off a long time. And in the past, I have already talked about signaling for special situations, for you know, the ground signals in yards, and also my gantlet track arrangement protecting a bridge over a river. However, what I want to cover today are the signals that you would use on your main line to control the movement of your trains and the flow of traffic so that nobody runs into anybody else as long as they obey the signals. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you how you can set that up on your model railroad and have prototype signaling for your trains and your operators and engineers. So let's get started. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now, before we get started, I do want to remind my viewers in the UK one more time that I will be attending the Worley uh, National Model Railway Exhibition November 26th and 27th in Birmingham. And if you see me there, please feel free to come on up, introduce yourself. I will be at the DCC concept stand part of the time, which is located right inside the uh, main exhibit hall doorway. And I'll also be wandering the aisles looking for the newest in uh, model railway products. So if you see me there, I'll be wandering around wearing this shirt probably, unless it's too darn cold to go around in a short sleeve shirt. And if you see me, please feel free to come on up and say hello. Uh, I really want to meet a lot of you guys over there at Worley. Another problem has arisen as a result of the UK Monday series I've been doing. And because there are fewer of you UK specific viewers out there watching these videos, the, U the YouTube computers have decided that uh, there is a reduced interest in my channel overall. And as a result of that, they've cut back, the computer system has cut back on promoting my videos in general. And that has meant a further decrease in the number of views, which the computer again assumes is due to reduced viewer interest. So it has cut back again. As a result of the number of views on my videos and on this channel have decreased significantly since I implemented the UK Monday uh, series. So. What I'm going to do is I've created a UK Model Railways video channel separate from this one, and I'm going to be migrating all of the uh, UK type uh, Model Railway content that has appeared on this channel over the last few years. I'm going to be moving all of that content to the new channel, and you'll be able to see it there. And the UK Mondays series will continue on that UK Model Railways channel. And on Monday, when I do put up a new UK Mondays video here, I'm going to do it one more time, I will include a link to the new channel. And it's going to be incumbent on you guys to go to that uh, new channel and subscribe to it. Because if it doesn't get enough subscribers, the channel will die. And we won't have that feature anymore. So let's go ahead and talk about signals for your mainline operations on your model railroad. Now, in the past, I have produced a couple of different videos on signals, several actually, and in one I did talk about various types of signaling, and that is ABS signaling and uh, CTC, Centralized Traffic Control. So I'm not going to go into those in any depth. What I will say is I'm going to be using ABS, which is Automatic Block Signaling System, here on the Piedmont Southern, and that's what I'm going to show you how to implement. And, and the way that ABS works is you basically have a detection system built into the rails on prototype railroads. And they pass a current through one rail, and if there is a train in the block uh, where that is occurring, then it will complete the circuit between the two rails, and that will trip a relay in a relay box, and that will control which lights come on in those signal heads. And so it's automatic. 
It doesn't require an operator to throw a switch. And this is the type of system that I will be implementing here on the model railroad. And that means that your dispatcher doesn't control it. it uh, it's independent of that and is dependent entirely on the logic built into the circuitry that I will show you in a little while. At this point, what I want to do is give you a demonstration here on the workbench of exactly how the automatic block signaling system, ABS system, that I'm going to be using on the Piedmont Southern and showing you how to build your own and install it on your model railroad, uh, actually works in a demonstration setup. So I've got four blocks set up here on the workbench. I've got the signals laid out for you. I've got the logic board that I use for this uh, all set up and wired up together. So we'll take a train through the sequence of blocks and watch the lights and how they change as trains would be moving through the various blocks. And then after you've seen the demonstration of how it all works, I'll go ahead and go back and cover the background on the ABS system, the automatic block signaling system that I'm going to be using. And we'll go into a little bit more depth on how it works on a prototype railroad and also how you would set it up on a model railroad. And we'll take a look at that a couple of different ways. And then in next week's video, we'll get into the real details of installing it on a model railroad. Now what I want to do right now is show you how this signaling circuit works on the model railroad. And what I've done is I've set up a sample right here on the bench top so you can see how the sequence works with several different blocks in a row. And there's no way to show you that if I did this on the model railroad itself because you just couldn't compress it enough. Okay, let's assume that this area here between each signal head represents one of those blocks on the railroad. And we have a train sitting here, or coming down the track, about to enter this block. And he's got a green light here, and a green light here, and a green here. There's a yellow here because there's nothing feeding into this one. That means that he can go through this entire section, through each block, without any problems because he's got green lights all the way. But what happens if we put a train here in front of him? Then it becomes a problem for, he, for him to enter that block simply because there's a train there already and you don't want him running into it. So the, te the detector, represented by this BD20, is going to give a negative signal here and turn on the red light. And that tells this guy, do not enter this block. So that protects that train and protects this one from crashing into him. Now what if he moves down here? Well, then that detector is going to give you a detection signal here. And you will see that suddenly this guy has a yellow signal. And that means that he can enter this block at restricted speed to give him enough time to stop before he gets to this red signal here. And that's gone red because of this guy right here being on the tracks in front of him. Now, what happens if this guy moves down here? Then the detector is feeding into this board and controlling this signal and everything behind it. So this guy now has a green light because he's got this one empty. This one has gone yellow because two ahead is, re is occupied. And that means that if that train went through the green and came up here to the yellow, that would tell him to proceed at restricted speed into the next block and be prepared to stop at the next red signal. So if he came up here, then he would have to stop and wait for this guy to move on and that to go to yellow. Now, let's look at what would happen then. This guy moves on and this block goes to ground. So we've got two blocks with green, one with yellow. So this guy here can now proceed through the yellow at restricted speed and be prepared to stop at the red because this guy is still sitting here in this block. So that's the sequence we would have. When this guy clears, then he can take it off and he can proceed, presumably at restricted speed because this guy is too ahead of him. Okay, so that should give you a pretty good idea then of how the system actually works on a model railroad. So what I wanna do now then is go ahead and give you a presentation on the ABS system, how you would implement it on a prototype railroad, how you implement it on your model railroad. So let's go ahead and work on that.
Now in this video, I'm going to be referring to three articles that appeared in various Model Railroader publications. And I want to thank Model Railroader and uh, Kambach for allowing me to use these uh, illustrations from those articles. Now the first one here is by a fellow named Mike Burgett, and it's where to place trackside signals. But let me tell you, it goes into a lot more depth than that. It goes into various aspects of different uh, railroad signal systems. So it covers ABS, the one I'm going to be talking about and using on my railroad, and uh, CTC. It uh, covers various other permutations of ABS. And so I think it's a great reference to have. Now, it's difficult to find it because it was in uh, the Model Railroader special issue, How to Build Realistic Layouts, that, uh, that was published in 2006. So it's long out of print. You might be able to find it on eBay. You might be able to find a bookseller who specializes in model railroad type publications and has back issues of model railroader for sale. And uh, also one source for all of these publications would be a local model railroading club. Very often they will have a lot of this stuff in their library. Uh, you might check with other model railroaders in your area who might collect the old publications and have a copy of these. Now one thing that is available as a source for a lot of these older um, model railroader articles uh, would be the model railroader or comeback archive. And what that is, it's a subscription service available at their website. Then you can subscribe to it on an annual basis. Um, they used to offer it for about $5 a month uh, on a month by month basis. So you could get a one month subscription and you could go online there and access the specific issues of Model Railroader that I'm going to give you here and download a copy of it or print it out, whatever you want to do to have access to that. So that's one thing, uh, one great way to get access to a lot of these older articles from Model Railroader. So the first one, as I say here, is this Where to Place Trackside Signals by Mike Bridget, and it goes into a lot more depth than just where to put the signals because he does cover various types of signaling systems, including the ABS system that I'm going to talk about in this video. So that's a great resource. The next one is a pair of articles by a fellow named Jeff Sherb. And these were published in the March and April 2001 issues of Model Railroader. And this particular article, Simple Circuits for Automatic Block Signals, Part one goes into the triple aspect signals that I use here on the Piedmont Southern as part of my ABS or automatic block signaling system. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today. And uh, it also goes into all of the, the logic involved, all of the components, the circuit board, everything is there for you. If you want to make your own circuit boards, you can do that because he provides the artwork for them. So that's the first one. Then the other one by Jeff Sherb, part two, as you can see here, this appeared in the April 2001 issue of Model Railroader, and it goes into a, a color searchlight signal system. So if you just want a searchlight or target signal uh, system like the one shown in this photograph here, uh, you can uh, build that yourself. I do not have that board. I did not make that board because I'm not using searchlight signals on my model railroad. But he does give all of the information on here. Now let's go on. I want to uh, touch on first the ABS or automatic block signaling system that I'm going to be showing you a circuit for and how to install on your model railroad. Now when you set up a model railroad or a prototype railroad, for ABS signaling, they have to, it has to be broken up into blocks. And what that means is you need a section of track that is a block, as shown in this um, diagram here, and the block would be somewhere around one and a half to three miles in length on the prototype railroad. And that allows plenty of length for a train to fit into the block and also have adequate stopping distance ahead of the signal. And then below that, in the diagram, he shows how to translate that into something for a model railroad. So he says here that basically, the length of your block should be equal to the average length of your trains, plus about 15%. 
So in this case, he's showing an average car length or train length of 22 cars, and then plus 15% means that the block would be 25 cars long. So that's about what you would need on your model railroad to allow stopping distance and for your train to be in the block. And of course, we can get away with that because we can stop on a dime almost with our model trains. Whereas with a prototype train, if they're heavy and pulling a coal drag or something like that and moving along, they can take quite a distance to break if they get a red light signal ahead of them. Okay, so that's the basic idea for setting up your model railroad first for block signaling. The next diagram that I've got here for you shows how that would be set up. So you've got your block signals, and this is for a single track main line. And so that allows for your trains to be going bi-directionally on a single uh, track, as shown in this diagram. So you would have triple aspect type signals across from each other facing in opposite directions with some sort of detector in each block uh, powering these and turning them on and off. So that's how that would work. And so you've got a good diagram here. He's showing, you know, different blocks. Block A is 25 car lengths. Block B is 27 car lengths because it's got that siding in the middle. And then another one of 25 car lengths. So that would be how you would basically set up your blocks on your model railroad to allow for signaling. If we then move on to the next image, and this is from uh, one of Jeff Sherb's articles. Now, this diagram provides just a little bit more detail for a single track mainline. However, if you imagine that each one of those rails shown in here as westbound and eastbound was an individual track, then that's how you would set this up for a double track mainline, which is what I'm going to be using on the Piedmont Southern. Now, the way that this worked, you were always looking two blocks ahead. Okay, so if a block was ahead of you was, was clear, then you might get a green signal. But if the block after it was occupied, then you would get a yellow. And the reason for that was the yellow meant to slow down and be prepared to stop at the entrance to the next block. So that it gave you plenty of time to slow down and be prepared to stop so that you had that stopping distance that you needed. And then, if that block suddenly uh, became unoccupied, it would go green. Now, of course, if the block immediately ahead of you had a train in it or a car blocking the track, then you would get a red signal. And that would tell you to stop immediately, don't enter this block. So that was the sequence of green, yellow, and red uh, signals that you would get depending on whether or not the blocks ahead of you were occupied or not. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Hopefully, between the introduction that I presented on signaling systems, as well as the demonstration that I did here on the desktop of the signaling system that I'm using on the Piedmont Southern, I've given you enough information for you to see whether or not this is going to be a good fit for your model railroads. Now, in next week's video, I will show you the circuit board that I had made up uh, for me in China and the components that go into that and the fact that you can build one of these circuit boards for under two bucks. And then we'll take a look at how to go about wiring this in to a DCC layout. So come on back next week for the second part of this video. In the meantime, have a great weekend, have a great week, and we'll see you here next Friday with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.